major oak. It's an emblem of Sherwood Forest. It's one of the oldest oak trees around. It's had 200 years worth of tourism, of people walking on the soil and its roots and everything it's suffered. So it's maybe not looking as healthy as it used to do. So we're doing lots of assessments today to see whether it's as healthy as it was last year, and then next year we'll do the same assessments to see if its health is improving or not. So it's a very, very important tree, so we can never have too much information. The more information, the better. We're doing some foliar sampling of the major oak. We're taking a MUP around the, the canopy, mobile elevating work platform, and we're going to be taking leaf samples from different parts of the uh, tree, which we call functional units. It's how the tree kind of subdivides. And then the leaves are going down to uh, scientists who are going to be looking at their composition and what's in them. And it's also about to uh, determine tree health. Because the tree is, is uh, kind of particularly thin at the moment, we want to limit how much we take off as well. So I'm using secateurs. I've cut it at a point where the tree would naturally shed a branch or a twig. So it does as little damage to the tree as possible. We've been working with the RSPB on the major oak for a couple of years now. So looking at the soil around the tree. So the purpose of today's visit, we've taken some soil samples so we can look at the work that we did almost a year ago is that actually starting to have the effects that we want it to. We did some exploratory work looking for roots around the tree so that we could target those roots to supply them with more local, naturally produced organic matter that could serve as a long-term food supply and also, again, kickstart some of those biological processes that are so vital for tree health. Today what we're doing is collecting leaf tissue from different branches we're going to take those leaves back to Cambridge and then extract the DNA. And that DNA will then be sequenced. And from that data, we'll be able to reconstruct how the genome of the oak looks in the different parts of the tree. What we're interested in is, since it was an acorn, to what extent has the genome changed and evolved within the tree? There are some questions there about, you know, why do, why do some trees like these trees last for so long? But also, you know, if we want to conserve them and protect them, understanding more about what these trees are at a genetic level could be useful. We're using this machine, which is a chlorophyll fluorescence meter. And the chlorophyll is the machinery that converts light and carbon dioxide uh, and water into carbohydrates, which is energy that the tree uses for growth, for acorns, reproduction and, and defence. So these clips have dark adapted the leaf. This tells us how healthy the chlorophyll is and how quickly it comes back into action after it's dark adapted. So we're assessing it with this machine annually as a benchmark to see whether the health of the tree is getting better or worse. One of the great things about a project like this is the passion and the commitment from a variety of disciplines. So it's actually quite unique these days, I think, to have so many people from different areas come together with one focus. And that kind of helps paint a bigger picture, which ultimately is kind of what this is all about. It's a bit of knowledge sharing, a bit of a voyage of discovery, but that will help us to understand things for future veteran or ancient trees and inform management practices for those, as well as hopefully ensuring the longevity of this one along the way.